on the program. Mr. Harvey, you'll need to pull your microphone much, much closer to you, sir. Right, right there. And Spoiler alert. Point it, point it up a little bit, sir. Spoiler alert. I'm one of them. Yeah, you're one of them. You are a sub. You are a uh, full-time sub. This is two days in a row for you. I know. I love it. No, well, I was gone for so long. Uh, yeah, I, you were out. Yeah. Yeah. But now you're back. I'm back. Guess who's back? Back again. Harvey's back. Tell a friend. He's here. And, but I'm not in my normal chair, so I don't have the the halo. That, and that you're not you wearing a tie stuff. either. I know. It's casual Friday, buddy. It's always casual Friday for me. I know. You, you know, they don't even ask me about that, about that last topic. I never wear it. Larry, put your mic, put your mic more into your. Into I your never space. wear a tie. There you go. There you so, go. Excellent. Uh, unless I'm afraid of going to jail at the hands of a judge, then I. That's. Then I always wear one. Absolutely. Yeah. And Bill, did we have a, an incident? Yeah, but don't don't tell Hornby. <laughs> we had an incident. Uh, Kenny Matson joins us by phone. Kenny, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, all. What are you looking at, Colin? Oh, Bill, okay. If I'm, I'm, when Colin stands up, I'm thinking I had a mute button incident or the camera's pointing up at the ceiling. So I immediately go into full panic form. There are very few people that can make me panic on this show. Colin standing up is one. I, I get that's when the adrenaline kicks in. I get the heartbeat. And there's a standing rule, I think. Do not have coffee cups or liquids on the table. Well, you look around here, with the exception of Larry Schultz, everybody does have. I just They're spelt, not open mugs, though. Yeah, and I, but I just spelt mine. And that's why everybody's looking jauntily at me. But it was not an. It just came a. Just it was not a full out spill. Yeah, we, we've we've had the full out spill. It's a bad thing. All right. Okay. So uh, let's see. Now we have uh, intros today. All ready. And we go a little something like this. Hit it. It's a whole new Friday around this place, and we've got a whole new crew with a whole new face. Mike Heights in session. Mike Carl's in a meeting. Joe Ferretti's flying around doing some sort of legal greeting. So let's bring in their subs. I believe there are three. And Bill, lock the door from the outside so none of them flee. <laughs> in the Mike Carl chair, we've got another law degree. And you'd better show up for work or this guy will decree. Matt Harvey is here, and this dude is so smooth. He's here so often to get rid of him, I'd need a petition to remove. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> In the Mike Height seat, I've got a fine old chap, a best-selling author by the name of John Gilstrap. He shook hands with Sam Donaldson. He sung with Perry Como, but he's, he knows nothing about sports, so he'll never meet Tony Romo. Sorry, John. That's okay. You know who Tony Romo is? I do. Oh, okay. Well, that's, do. A, that's good. That's okay. good. On the Joe Ferretti telephone, as a matter of courses, I'm bringing a guy who'd rather hang out with horses. He applied to be sheriff. The county commission said, what? Ken Matson is here because he didn't make the cut. Good morning, Ken. Good morning. Good morning, all. <laughs> it's a little harsh. Do you, do you think it was because his last name starts with M? I think it's exactly what it is. It's anti-M bias. And now onto some folks who are here each week, like Larry Schultz, for instance, who after missing a month now has a two-show streak. Lawrence was under the weather with some post-nasal drip, but I got him out of his sick bed with a text that simply read, Wally Pip. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That leaves us with the Admiral who never misses a day, who never colors his hair. Hell, he's proud of his gray. <laughs> he drives his Tesla and eats breakfast with the boys and tunes out the far left and right and all of their noise. He didn't apply to be sheriff, didn't utter a chirp, even though he once ran around with Wyatt Earp. With Wyatt <laughs> <laughs> That's a little before my time. Not much. Yeah, yeah, Just a tiny I've bit. I've seen some of those old black and white pictures, Bill. <laughs> uh, and on that note... No, 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 no. There's one thing before we get oh, going yeah, too go far. Ahead. All right. Nope. Um, I hope Colin is ready. You, I have been embarrassed with pictures of me. I have been, had my... my Picture installed over a picture of a very buff Joe Ferretti. Oh yeah, we've had the very very buff Joe Ferretti. I thought now we would show the the reasonably buff Robert Lo Cicero from is that college or that or is high that school? is uh, I'm 18 years old there. That is my freshman uh, picture at Duquesne University. My football picture. Right. It's, a, it's a fine looking. You haven't changed a bit from the football. Oh, good. Put All me right. up. Put me up in a solo shot, uh, Colin, and then fade to the, fade to the uh, football picture when I'm 18. I'll face this way so you can see and see if I've changed at all in those 40. Uh, three years. It's and, just and not it even the same guy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he was handsome then. 
That's Honestly, like a passport I would not photo for Odd. That's, that's 1981. That is uh, August of 1981. Uh, somewhere between the uh, three days of freshman football. Which, I would not have recognized I'm, you. I'm glad I don't have to do anymore, by the way. Yeah, well, that's me, 18 years old. Your beard filled out, too, over the years. Yeah, it was, was kind of... It was here, but, it was, but, yeah. but that was the thing then. It was a chin strap beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, did, you did that, and all that, right? So, anyway, that was it. You yeah. good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Billy, you're going to start off the crew today. We're going to give Matson a break. Uh, move him down the line a second. Usually that's the telephone guy's job, but I'm going to put you on the spot today first. Well, Joe Ferretti generally does this, and he does such a marvelous job because we spend a full 20 minutes discussing his point. So there's the threshold's pretty high, and uh, so I have to reach. Uh, I, mine's going to be a procedural issue. Uh, the Senate uh, will be passing bills over to the House that – went through committee last year but did not go through committee this year the argument was it's going to speed up the process they've already been through the committee once why go through the committee a second time uh the the counter argument would be uh that the senate is the deliberative body the procedures are that before anything is passed to the house uh the, it should go through committee uh there could be a last year there was probably a makeup a, a change in the various committees from year one to year two less so on non-election years such as what we have now but nevertheless uh it is a i think breaks with the deliberative process even though a good strong argument is being made that it been through the committee last year therefore it will expedite the process uh, question my colleagues which trumps the other uh, the uh, the fact that we should be a deliberative process or to expedite uh, the uh, uh, getting the bills through all right let's get telephone Ken Matson involved right away Kenny I think it's the deliberate process. I think we don't mind. We're kind of wasting a little bit of time, the little time they have up in Charleston as we hear from them. So if it's already been through the committee process, they're already working throughout the year, we hear, to do any little tiny fixes here and there. And maybe a small one-day committee just for any corrections and hit it right to the floor. I mean, if they have to do it for next year. But um, my thing is – they're only there for a, f a couple of months and, you know, I mean, they're working throughout the year. And I think whatever bills they should have is go, you know, that year um, because some of the bills could be very advantageous to business and the West Virginia citizens. And sometimes in regards to tax cuts or whatever, especially after this property tax, um, we won't go into the communication with that, but um, that could be a very advantageous for somebody's wallet um, you know, year by year. That's my thoughts. Mr. Harvey. I'm. I think the that that that's a good process for certain bills, obviously, because um, as Ken said, you only have finite time, uh, and the purpose of the committee is to to work out the bugs uh, of the potential legislation and to answer all the questions. And if they pass on, if they don't uh, uh, put one back in committee this year that they did last year, and there's and there's more debate on the floor than they then they've made a mistake. But um, I can tell you, looking at that one bill, um, Senate Bill 163 that we talked about yesterday, which was the reckless driving with uh, death that was went through committee last year, it went, it's on the floor again for a second reading today. So in, in that case, I think that was a perfect bill. There was nothing else to discuss on it, and the full body will have it and have an opportunity to chomp into it. Mr. Schultz? Yeah, I, I mean, my interest would be the, the rules that apply to this. I presume there are some rules about what bills, if any, can go through this sort of irregular process. And doggone it, if there's one thing I want my government to do, it's to follow its own rules. I think that's like a, a bedrock uh, idea. And if you're going to make a rule, there must have been a reason why you made that rule that any bill brought up in last session either passes in this session or you start over next next session you got to change the rule if you're going to change the practice um so i'm not clear what the senate and the house rules are but if you know if you get into the process of just saying well this rule's kind of inconvenient now we'll blow it off that's a mistake and that's a mistake that could come back and haunt us all in ways we we don't yet see so I, I'd be very cautious about 
violating or going beyond the actual rule, what it says. Mr. Gilstrap. I think in this case, the, the faces are all the same. Uh, from when the last session ended to where this session begins. So the deliberative process has already happened. A lot of these bills die simply because the bell rings, the session is over, and they just didn't advance to, to the finish line. Uh, and in this case, since it's, there has not been an election in between, I, the argument would be different if, if the faces in the chamber were different than they were last time. But in this case, I don't see any problem with it at all. And it does speed along the business of government to get things done. What, there's 2,000 bills, I think we've been told, that get introduced in the legislative session. Most of those die on the vine for whatever reason. But then at the, on the last couple of days of the session, there's a big push to get some of these changed. And sometimes they just die because they run out of time. In that, that case, I see no problem bringing them back in the, in the new session. Billy? Yeah, and I think uh, Matt Harvey uh, made a good point here. They've had a full year, or not a full year, uh, something like 10 months, though, to look at what did not get passed. If there had been a problem, they would have had an opportunity to tweak it and to change it accordingly. Uh, yeah, I think the points are good. I think the, uh, generally the minority party is the one that will complain the most. Now the minority party is so minority that people don't uh, do not listen to it. Uh, but uh, but it comes back to the fact that what Larry said, if there are rules existing, we need to modify the rules. Not, you should not just ignore the rules. And I, too, Larry, do not know if there are standing rules or not. Uh, but the argument is that uh, there's a lot of bills going through. If you can get a leg up on the process and expedite it, uh, we should probably take advantage of it as long as it's not uh, a significant change in the in the committee bodies that would, Senator, that would look at it. Senator Jason Barrett is uh, monitoring the program from Charleston. He said there is no rule that requires a bill to go to committee. All of these bills passed last year with at least a supermajority. Our caucus has discussed these bills over the past few months, and we agreed to move these bills quickly. But, yeah, uh, and Jason's right on that, but the key word here is caucus. Uh, the caucus is the only ones that are looking at these bills now to move them forward quickly are the caucus, which <clears throat> does not give the minority party any say-so whatsoever. That is one of uh, two comments Jason has made on the thread today. The other is, after looking at a picture of me now and back then, that John put up, Jason stated, Father, time is undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> and and six of my good friends who listened to the show agreed with the comments, by the way. <laughs> There's a reason why all of us are laughing. Because <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I can't laugh too much. I'll start coughing again. Okay. So, uh, Bill, uh, I think that wraps up in record time in issue number one. So you failed miserably in ca carrying the I, conversation I, in this first I, second. I, I, t I mentioned that, yeah, when I'm going into it. Ferretti has such a high bar, and I knew going in that I would not be able to match that bar. Let's go with a bonus issue here, too, in this okay. first segment that you posted, too, and that was the county commission process to fill out the sheriff's role. Yeah. Uh as everybody knows, uh, when uh, Sheriff Harmon uh, resigned, uh, the county commission put in a procedure, uh, and there, they solicited individuals to apply for the sheriff's job, uh, and there were something, I believe, like eight applied. And then they went through what I believe to be, uh, I was told, an open review process that uh, anybody could uh, track with the, from the county commission county commission chambers via the uh, 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 the screening of, of the interview questions and the like and now they've narrowed it down to three uh, I think this has been a very open process I think it's been a, a very good process uh, there's always room to quibble and this is my question to my fellow uh, discussioners is is there room to quibble over the process that the county commission has followed on this well let's start with the person most affected by it in the room ken matson by telephone he had signed uh, the list to be considered for the committee uh, the selection of sheriff uh, ken did you get an interview or anything like that uh, as the list was winnowed down to three uh negative i received no uh inquiry into uh, uh my interest in the position uh to bill's comment i think I do have one small thing, and I think it really revolves around anybody that's going to run for sheriff during the upcoming election. There are a few there that I would 
I'll be interested in seeing and talking to in regards to their run for sheriff. And I think it puts a small little burden on them um, in regards to this. If they apply, they get this, this position, it counts as one term, as Matt Harvey said yesterday. And I think it really cripples or a person who may do a really, really good job and are only one term. And um, I think they should have put something in there in regards to that you don't plan to to run for this position and just have a placeholder that has either administrative, managerial, with a little bit of law enforcement background. You don't need it, but it always helps. Um, that way, the person who is going to run for that position in the election or puts their name in has a possibility of uh, not only getting one term, but an actual full, full term. That's my view on it. As right now, that one year would count as a full term yeah. for the first term. Larry? Yeah, we had excuse me, we had something similar to this when I was county commissioner when the assessor stepped down and we 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 solicited individuals and made a selection to fill in the remaining term. But one of the requirements was that they would not the individual we selected would not be running for office again. Uh Eddie Gokenhauer has spoken to this. He feels that was something they had considered, and they did not want to put that restriction on it. So there, there's no prohibition now from from the, can, the candidate they select whether or not they will or will not run for the full term. Part of the official press release from the Berkeley County Commission uh, that they had sent out uh, in regards to the eight who had signed up included this paragraph on January 11, the county commission will hold a special afternoon executive session to review applications for the vacancy. Applicants who are selected to be interviewed in an open session of the county commission will be released to the public following the executive session. So that list of eight in executive yeah. session, they winnowed down to three. Uh, we don't know at this point what their criteria was for moving it from eight until three. Ken, were you made aware of any points of qualification or discussion that would help them winnow the list as you signed up? Uh, no, I was not. Did you ask any questions when you signed up to find out what would get a person into that next grouping? Uh, no, as I asked questions to uh, the county committee, well, they weren't in session, but um, nobody was in the office at that time. But I talked to the secretary out front and just basically the paperwork that you, they, you have to sign up, cover letter, resume, et cetera, and you just present it. And then, of course, the information was put on the list put on the, uh, the Facebook page on how uh, it was going to be conducted. And uh, now they didn't say anybody who wasn't picked, they would be notified or, hey, we have a couple extra questions. But that's what executive session is for. Um, I think they should have executive session. They should have asked some people to come in who they may or may not, um, how should I say, uh, uh, they have some reservations on that maybe win them over or, or um, you know, change their minds. Because reading something on paper is a little different when you actually meet that person and you're actually having a conversation and, and, and ideas are being thrown about. Ken, well, why did you apply for the position of sheriff and what uh, do you think were your best qualifications for the position? Well, I have managerial and administrative uh, experience as well as military police experience. So I think that would be um, pretty good in regards to those qualifications. So I did logistics, training, uh, whatever you need. I think come comes down to with a non-commissioned <coughs> officer, which Mike Height, the badger, could tell you. Um, <laughs> that and I think for a placeholder for one year, I think I could, I, well, I know, I could have done the job and let the person who, um, who, who would want the job in regards to running, running for it for election have an opportunity to have two full terms. That would be my thing. And plus, in addition to, you're taking, if it's a deputy that's already there that's interested, you're taking one more person, personnel, off the street to be sheriff. And I'm unaware if the other one is one's either, I don't know if Richmond is retired um, or, and I think Davy Jones may be a reserve police officer. Well, Davy didn't but, make the cut. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, you know, in regards to, to, to the guy holding it now, you're taking a, a deputy off the road, um, that could one chief deputy that's, uh, you know, doing the things that need to be done in regards to the, the police force, uh, the, the police force, the sheriff, while, you know, he is chief law enforcement officer, is also an administrator. And I think my skills, uh, my past skills, uh, would definitely be advantageous for the county for that position. That's why I ran.
Richmond is retired. Uh, he works for the uh, court security, but he's retired from the sheriff's department. Yes, yes. So if he's still working for security there, I mean, he put his name in. But again, you're losing one person, and then you know, how do you go about? Is he is Richmond going to run like he did the other time? So that's that's where it brings into: is he going to run or not um, in that position? And where you know we already had that discussion: is, is should they run or shouldn't they? Um, it's their choice as a commission. I just kind of feel bad for someone who's going to, who like um, Blair, uh, not Craig Blair, but uh, the other gentleman Robert, who's the Robert commandant. Yeah. yeah, Robert Blair. Um, you know, I, I what I read about him, I think he'd be pretty well as a sheriff. But if he does make the cut in regards to that's who they pick, he's term limited to one time. Yeah, Jeremy yeah. Farner and, and David Scott Richmond, the other three. Richmond was uh, Kenny Lamaster's deputy uh, chief, if I remember that. Go ahead, uh, John. No, I would just say my objection, and objection is too strong a word, what I question is the wisdom of filling an important elected position via job interview and appointment by other politicians. I think that I have great faith in the body politic to elect the right person into the right job. And when when that position becomes available, I don't know why we don't have a special election to fill it as opposed to treating it like a job interview because it's not that kind of a job. Matt, is that constitutional since it's already passed the halfway point of the elected office in terms of appointment versus election? There, there is time limits when, when it, it triggers an election versus an appointment time. It's, so, I mean, this one, like, you, you are having an election. It's just the timing works out that he he resigned right or he yeah resigned his office right before the filing period so um when could you anyway i i disagree having a special yeah. election there's a, there's a primary in what uh 4 months yeah, absolutely yeah. in may so and having an election right now to fill it would be logistically it, difficult to have an, to to then go on the ballot to be on the primary in may anyway but does the does the appointed sheriff have all of the same uh, responsibilities and authority as the elected sheriff. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's elections are expensive. <clears throat> They're extremely expensive, and puts a big burden on the co county staff as well. They have to it has to administer, administer the elections. Good, Ken. I think it's being so close to to the next election, you had to do something. Um, the same thing happened. It's a little different with the Elaine Malk issue. Um, that I know I was really against that choosing an insider. They had a person that knew everything that could do it. And that's a little different when you're talking county clerk in regards to sheriff. Um, you know, getting someone who has a little past experience in law enforcement and administration, not only me, but some of the other candidates as well, um, to be in there as a placeholder uh, for the next election. And because, again, what I was saying is you're, we already have a taxed deputy, you know, law enforcement. We need more officers. And then one more officer you take off there, off you know, off uh, the list to be able to go out there and do what they need to do, protect and serve. One's acting as a sheriff, so we need to put somebody in there as soon as possible uh, to do the administrative work uh, that needs to be done in that office. Billy, yeah, you mentioned Elaine Malk. The uh, the process for Elaine Malk was not an open process. It was literally done overnight behind closed doors. This, I think, which angered everybody. Which angered everybody. Yeah. Uh, this this process is much more open. 